everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's David Stanbury and I'm a photographer based in the northwest of England. And welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time visiting it, thank you for coming. Please subscribe, hit that notification button and then you don't miss any of our future videos. If you're a regular, thank you for coming back. I hope you've liked our previous videos. I'm sure you're gonna love this one. So what's this video all about? Well, during lockdown, and apart from needing a, a lockdown haircut, I've been doing a little bit of cleaning around around the house and I don't think I'm the only person who's been clearing out junk out of attics and, and sheds and things like that because I've actually been given a couple of bags of photographic uh, memorabilia uh, to see if I was interested in it. Now, obviously amongst some of that uh, stuff was, was pretty much useless, uh, old plastic lens caps and all the rest of it, but I came across a couple of boxes of these in one of the bags and uh, they absolutely intrigued me. Developers for Imperial Plates by the Imperial Dry Plate Company Limited in Cricklewood of London. Now, I had a little quick look at these and I wondered what they were. And I was absolutely blown away by what I found inside because we have these. I don't know if you can see that. Glass plates. So this is obviously before digital. This is before negative. This is the early days. These are the real beginnings of photography as, as we as photographers know it now. So I wanted to find out more about these glass plates, who the photographer was, where they came from. Um, but first of all, the Imperial Dry Plate Company. Now I've done a little bit of research on the internet and the Imperial Dry Plates works in Cricklewood uh, was started by a guy called Joseph Ackworth in 1892. 1892. Now, I've had a little bit of a look through these glass plates. I'm not a history expert. I'm certainly not a fashion expert, as you can tell. Um, but I reckon that these images are around about 1900 to 1910. So that would make these 100 to 120 years old, these particular images on here. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to do a little bit more research on it. Um, I wanted to, first of all, scan these and, and hopefully get a print. I hope some of these are good enough to get some prints from because in these days, it was all about print. It was proper photography, all about printing your photographs. And I don't think these glass plates have been printed. So I would love to get a print from some of these if I can. Uh, I'd also like to find out a little bit more about uh, the area that these images were taken and hopefully the photographer who took these particular images. And again, if you can help in any way, please, the description below, any information will be gratefully received. So what am I gonna do? Well, first of all, I need to create a, a contact print, shall we say. So I need to digitize the, the images so I can get them on my screen so I can have a look at them and decide which prints, if any, are good enough for printing. Um, and hopefully I can show some, some images to you. So let's make a start there. Uh, we're going to go run through the process of, of getting the images digitized. We're going to take photographs of the glass plates and we'll run through that. And then hopefully we can show you some of the images, but fingers crossed at the end of this, we can do a print and then we can literally see the images, how they should be seen on a nice piece of fine art paper. So let's get straight into that video. So let's go through the setup. Um, I, I suppose this is quite a basic setup. Uh, I, actually, I'm only digitizing these last slides, uh, making a contact print, shall we say. Um, so I don't want to go to the whole extreme of, of high resolution or scanning, but if there's any particular glass slides that I really want to print up, and I'm, I'm fingers crossed I'm hoping that there is, uh, I'll scan them and get a much higher resolution then we can get a really good print off them. So the setup is uh, I've got my light box, which is my old light box from the, the good old film days that we used to look at the films on. On top of that, I've got an A4 piece of paper in which I've actually cut an aperture. Now the aperture is exactly the same size as what the glass slide is. So as long as the glass slide goes inside the aperture, the focus, the framing is going to be exactly the same. So we can really run through all these, uh, these glass slides quite quickly. Uh, the camera is my Canon 5D Mark III, um, which I have tethered to my laptop and to my ISO. Uh, and I have a pro, uh, preset actually put in with, uh, with Lightroom. So every time I press the button, the same preset's gonna be uh, added to every single glass slide. Um, again, we're only digitizing them. So some will be off, some will be correct, uh, but we can always make a few alterations uh, afterwards. Um, the camera settings are 160th ISO. Uh, I've got f8 uh, and I've got it at 40th of a second. I just that's that's just what I think is going to work the best. So I've got that set on there, but we can always change and, and move that as we go along. Um, so yeah, so I'm getting really excited now. Let's give this a go and see what's uh, see what's on these glass slides. So white gloves. I don't want to uh, obviously scratch or damage these glass slides any more than what than what they already are. Um, 
I've got to be honest, they're not in the best of condition. Uh, but then again, I've worked out that these might be around about 120 years old, these, these glass slides. So I suppose they're in damn good condition for, for being 120 years old. So I'll just have a quick look at it. Um, give it a quick blow down, trying to get any dust off it. Like I say, I can always spot the dust out anyway, so I don't want to go into too much uh, roughness, shall we say, with these with these glass slides. Give the light box a quick blow down. And again, as long as I've got it inside the aperture, um, it will always be centre of the frame. Now, to help with reducing camera shake, um, I'm actually set with the with the tethered setting. I'm actually firing this via the computer. So we've got the the camera settings up on here. Uh, again, fortieth of a second at f8. So if we just press the button, I'm actually quite excited to see what's on this. Uh, so if we just press the button, let's see what we get. Oh wow! Look at that. So we've got here some. This has got to be obviously this is before the first world war. So we've got some artillery team here. We've got the horses in the background. We've got the old, old-fashioned gun. I'm not some artillery expert. Um, wow, I am genuinely excited about this. I mean, this, this in theory could be an image that's not been seen for 120 years. That is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Let me give you a closer look at this. So I've just digitized this glass slide and, and I, I just had to show you this. Um, this is actually taken at a, a place called Horton Tower, which is a local wedding venue to where, to where, we, uh, where the studio is. And uh, it's famous because this is where um, sirloin beef was first knighted and um, the king enjoyed it, the, the roast beef so much that he knighted it and said from now on this piece of beef will be called sirloin. And this is the actual place in the hall. Um, now I've been photographing weddings here for for 25 years and this pillar here has never had I've never seen it with a statue on top of it it's, it's always just been used like a somewhere for guests to put glasses and things like that and I've never seen this bush here and um, so actually we can see here the uh, the statue that was on top of the on top of the pillar in the middle of uh, in the middle of the courtyard at Horton Tower I have never seen that before so I'm not going to bore you with the uh, the post production of what I'm going to do with these particular uh, images that we've uh, that we've scanned here now. Uh, for me, this was just about digitising them, getting them on the computer so that I could have a look at them. Um, my plan is to to print a few photographs, uh, a few prints of, of these glass slides, and I think this is going to be uh, one of the prints that I'm going to uh, one of the images that I'm going to print because this is this is just stunning, and it's been so exciting to look back 120 years through the eyes of a fellow photographer. I mean, this is not point and press. This is, there's a hell of a lot of skill involved with, with creating these, these last slides. So it's been absolutely just fantastic, just really inspirational to look back over these images from a bygone time. So this is one of the things that I love about photography is this particular photographer is no longer with us, um, yet the work is, and we can still enjoy the work of this photographer and this photographer has allowed us to go back to, to the 1900s. So let's have a look at some of these images. Um, I hope you enjoy them. Let me know what you think of them in the descriptions below. Um, yeah, let's enjoy this together.
And here is that very print. Um, I hope you got to see the texture that's on this paper. Um, it's actually a textured warm fine art paper. I've gone for that paper just to give it a little bit more of a vintage sort of look and feel. And who would have thought 100, 120 years after this picture was taken, it's finally seen the light of day in print. And what I thought was rocks at the end of the bridge actually turns out to be two little boys having a sandwich. Hey, the innocence of youth. Um, so yeah, so I hope you've liked this, uh, this, this print. I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. It's been a real labour of love for me. And I've, I've come to a couple of conclusions. Um, whilst I was looking through the images, um, there seemed to be quite a few images of, of the same gentleman. So I thought to myself, perhaps some of these images were the, the world's for selfie. Perhaps he was photographing himself. Um, and then I came to another conclusion, which I like a little bit better. Perhaps... Perhaps he was the, the photographer's husband. Um, perhaps this is a female photographer. Who knows? If you've got any ideas, please leave your comments uh, below. Uh, if you've got any ideas where the photographs were taken or any comments about these photos, please, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, so thank you for watching. Again, this is probably one of the only good things that's come out of lockdown is the fact that these glass plates have managed to see the light of day again. So I'm hopefully going to be printing a few more of these in the, in the very near future. Um, I do feel that these need to be in a museum or certainly on public view or something like that. So that's a plan that I've, I've got coming up. Um, so thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to this video and hit that notification button because we've got quite a few more videos coming out. Um, hopefully by the time the next video comes out, I'll have managed to get this haircut um, because there's no way I'm coming back on video again with, with my lockdown hairstyle. So please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you guys on the very next video. Thank you for watching.